Alan Hirsch Advisors, creating aha moments, presents Aha Business Podcasts. We provide opportunities to discover information to help you run your business and guide your decision making. The more you know, the better decisions you make. For more information, log on to alanhirschadvisors.com. I'm your host, Alan Hirsch. Attention business owners, has your business suffered financially from COVID-19? If so, let us help. I am Alan Hirsch, a member of Business Coaches Assembled under a grant from the Small Business Breakthrough Executive Team. Our mission is to help business owners who have seen their revenues negatively impacted by 20% or more due to the virus. We can help you recover 50,000 to 70,000 or more of your lost revenue over the next 90 to 120 days. For more information, go to www.ahaonlinelearning.com to receive my book, 45 Minute Breakthroughs. That's go to www.ahaonlinelearning.com. Uh, welcome to today's podcast. My guest is James Feldman, uh, the Nowist. He's a recent author of Shit Happens and How to Reinvent Yourself asking in 3D thinking. So first of all, my first question to every guest is what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? Well, I see lots of opportunities coming out of the pandemic, but more importantly, I'm a problem solver and there's always the need to solve a problem for somebody. So I get up in the morning and I find new challenges and new opportunities to do what I do which is really go inside the box and discover the problem, identify it, and then come up with a solution. Okay. So what do you, what, you know, uh, shift happens. How do you invent yourself using 3D thinking? What is 3D thinking? So 3D thinking is like a pyramid or a three-legged stool. It's depth, distance, and determination. So if we use the metaphor of thinking outside the box, we don't know what's in the box. We don't know what the problem is. And so the problems often are the fact that you don't really identify the problem correctly. Therefore, you're coming up with the right solution to the wrong problem. So by going in the box, that's the depth. And you break apart the components and you really spend 90% of your time really articulating, defining, and honing in on what the real problem is. And then so, you go ahead. And then you look outside the box and you say, hey, is there anybody out there willing to pay me for this solution? If they're not willing to pay you and you don't see a need and you're not filling a need, then all you're doing is creating a hobby. But if in fact there is a demand because you've identified a problem, people are willing to pay for it, then the question is, do you have the determination, the business plan? the financial backing to carry it forward. Three Ds, mm -hmm. depth, distance, determination. So the, uh, the three Ds are depth, determination, and what again? Distance. Distance, okay. So you, in, in fact, are helping people by coaching them through, their, through the problems. You've written the book during the, the pandemic of the last year. Uh, so, you know, say that your toolbox is for people experiencing an employment crisis. How do you help them through that crisis? So the first question for everybody that's unemployed is, do you want to go back to that same job? So if you want to go back to that same job, that's different than, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I gave them 25 years of my life and they didn't treat me well, or the business is shut down, et cetera. So it's a pivot. And the question of the pivot is, what do you really want to do that will get you up in the morning? What do you really want to do for your next life, your next career, whatever you want to call it? And that's the first big decision. If it's, hey, I'm uh, employed and I want to go back to being employed, then you need to focus on how you get another job. And that typically means you have somebody help you with refining your resume, you clean up your LinkedIn profile, and you start to do networking. Mm -hmm. So the question really, really becomes, Alan, which direction do you want to go first? And then you start to create that pathway. Yeah. Well, it, it's like the first question I asked you, what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? Uh, 
And that's really talking about the why, why you do what you do, which develops a passion rather than just going to work for somebody. So you need to feel that there's something passionate about what you're doing. Well, I think a lot of people who have never been in, you know, an entrepreneur think it's a very simple thing to do. Well, I'm going to work for myself. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, and we, they, you know, I, they do. I've been through that with a lot of them. Yes. <laughs> it's like, poof. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to point out to them, hey, you worked for a big company. And so you had an assistant, you had resources, you had an IT department. You are your people. Yes. You are your <laughs> IT department. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I we, we both run into the people that uh, don't realize that uh, 20% of what they do generates 80% of their sales. And they've got to find the time and the money to uh, delegate to some of the people that do that 80% of the work. Well, and I think you've, you've touched on the biggest problem. You always had somebody else you could push it off to. My computer isn't working, I'll call the IT department. Right. Well, we're the IT department. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's all of that. So in certain industries that, have, that are challenging, uh, you know, what have you done? Uh, how do you see the, the various industries, the arts, the entertainment, the recreation? Uh, what do you do to help them in their, in their 3D uh, thinking? I think you have to understand as an employee that the playing field has been leveled major industries will never be the same again. I go back to my earlier comment. Do you want to become an employee again? Or do you really believe that you've got the chutzpah to become an entrepreneur? Once you've made that decision, and and let's go back to your comment. I'm working in hospitality. I'm working in travel. I'm working in something that has been devastated. How do I fix that? Well, as an example, I've got somebody who was in hospitality and he was a tour director. And I showed him new technology where he can become the virtual tour guide using his iPhone and walking around and broadcasting to someone who isn't going to get on a plane. Well, how do you do that? You start to set up other people in other areas that have a like thought pattern and you start to come up with, in essence, virtual tours. If you're in the restaurant business, the carryouts have really been the mainstay. Well, what else can you do with the carryouts? Well, maybe you set up a Zoom call where you teach people how to prepare the food and you start to do a cooking class. I mean, I'm doing doing classes on chocolate making. I don't think anybody woke up this morning saying I'm dying to make chocolate, but they're bored and they're looking for some way to occupy their time. What has happened during the pandemic is we had a major shift, a major pivot in the use of the virtual technology. So there were companies out there like GoToMeeting and Microsoft who bought Skype that became Team, and they got their butt kicked by this little company in China called Zoom. Because Zoom said, I'm going to focus on making Zoom easy for everybody to use. And I'm going to give away the first 40 minutes. Anything above that, you got to pay for a subscription. So what happened is they started to build up a user base. People started using Zoom. They found it very easy and simple, simple to use. And Zoom went from zero to 60 by zooming forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they, I mean, I transformed during the... Uh, uh, the virus itself. I mean, I went to a podcast. I was doing a live talk radio show. That ended. I mean, there was no new live talk. You didn't go to the studio. <laughs> well, the other thing that it has done is it's opened up everybody's eyes to a global opportunity. I mean, I, I have clients in China. I have clients in England that I may have never had before, but they found me. They right. said, can, can, can we talk to you? And I go, yeah, what time? Well, let's see, your time, that'll be two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay, if I'm willing to get up at two o'clock in the morning, then they know I'm serious. Right. No, it's, it's been amazing to, to use Zoom. Uh, 
you know, and, and what I do and see my clients, uh, I used to drive to them and it takes to do one meeting with the time to and from, I can do three meetings. Well, and you get much more of a focus if you can keep their distractions at bay. Right. I mean, you and I are looking at one another. If I get up and leave, you know I left. Right. <laughs> Well, you can put it on mute. You can put yeah. it on, uh, uh, you know, stop showing the video and you're disappeared. Yeah. Uh, and yes, you can. Uh, and it, uh, uh, but it's been a, a brave new world. It's, uh, it's opened up. I mean, I've got clients now in Utah and Texas and, and other places that I never would have dreamed of having. Well, and, and again, you know, everything has ramped up, you know, uh, we'll send you an invoice. Nope, I'm going to do it right online. I put it in your chat box. You need to pay me using Zelle. And, and you start to see that the trajectory of interactions have become much more transformative rather than transactional. Yeah, it's it's been amazing. So you're still working with uh, some of these industries. Can you, you know, give me a, an example? You, you talked a little bit about the hospitality, the, the tour guide that went virtual. And how's he doing with his virtual tours? Is he creating the market, the demand? He, he's doing great. I introduced him to a little device that you mount your phone on that's like a stabilizing device. So he can walk around and use it like a camera, but you're not getting a lot of jiggling. Right. And so he found a guy in Italy to do the same thing. And he got him one of the devices and he found a guy in London. So now he can literally set up these tours and he can book the tours. So as an example, there's a thing called Airbnb experience. If you're not familiar with it, Airbnb has done their own pivot and they now host these virtual talks. So you want to learn how to make candles. It's there. You want to learn how to, to uh, clean your fish tank. It's there. This, this week I had a part break on my vacuum cleaner. So I got online, I ordered the part, the part came in, no instructions, nothing, zero. <laughs> I called him up and I said, there's no instructions. She goes, we don't do that. We supply parts. Well, but I got the part, I don't know how to install it. Go on YouTube. Right. I went on YouTube, I typed in Dyson and I put in the model number. Alan, there must've been 200 videos. I know more about that vacuum cleaner today than I ever thought I was going to need. Or ever wanted to know, or but you had to find. To. But here's the key. My vacuum cleaner is working as good as it was when I bought it five years ago. Right. I would have never done that. I would have probably spent $100 or $200, sent it over to a vacuum cleaner repair guy. He would have either fixed it, not fixed it, whatever. I would have been frustrated. I would have been out 200 bucks. The part was $8. Mm -hmm. No, it's a, it's a very, uh, uh, the, the business has changed dramatically in the last, uh, uh, in the last year. It's been an amazing opportunity if people are prepared to take advantage of it. Well, and again, as we said before, you have got to become much more fluent in taking care of yourself because there isn't that same infrastructure you know, it used to be pick up the phone, call the guy, he'd come over and repair it. Well, that even, doesn't happen. You yeah. know, it, it, in the last six months, I've repaired my garbage disposal. I have repaired a sink. I have repaired a vacuum cleaner. That, that's, I'm not Mr. Handyman. But. Right. <laughs> but, but even more so uh, in business, if, if you were in business before it or, and, or as an entrepreneur before it, a business owner, uh, your business has changed. You've gone uh, virtual. Your uh, bookkeeper, if you had a bookkeeper, is at home. You're you're at your home, and you're doing business. There's a law a law firm here in Baltimore that's a, uh, a large regional growing law firm, where sixty percent of the attorneys have already said we're staying at home. We're not going to work from a central location. They've already agreed to redesign all those spaces. They're cutting back on the, as the leases expire, they're gonna cut back on the spaces. And the whole dynamic of, of law firms are changing. Accounting firms are changing. 
But again, to your point, my resources have expanded. I'm using a designer in Pakistan. I'm using a copywriter in Bangladesh for all, right. I mean, you know. Right, but absolutely. You're, you're doing where, whatever you need to do to uh, get things done. Let's uh, take a, a brief break for a couple of commercials. And when we come back, I'm gonna continue this conversation with James Feldman, the, the analyst. Uh, I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, and this is AHA Business Podcast. Hi, Rick Dempsey here. As a former Oriole and Series MVP, I know a lot about winning and championship teams. Today, I am happy to tell you about my award-winning web design and internet marketing team, Adventure Web Interactive. For over two decades, many of Maryland's most successful firms have chosen Adventure Web as their strategic partner for web design and online marketing. I can tell you from using them personally, their search engine optimization and social media programs have saved their clients tens of thousands over the traditional pay-per-click digital agency. Visit AdventureWebInteractive.com and listen to what clients such as Hercules Fence, TriStar Electric, ABC Rental, Rhine Landscaping, Markdown's Office Furniture, and many more highly successful firms have to say. And don't forget to tell them Rick Dempsey sent you. Strengthen, protect, and preserve your retirement nest egg. Scott Garceau here for the Stephen J. Sless Group, Baltimore's reverse mortgage specialist. Reverse mortgages have evolved to become a viable retirement tool. Enjoy retirement without monthly mortgage payments, improve cash flow, pay off debt, and stretch retirement savings. Stephen and his team can offer strategies to make housing wealth work for you. If you're 62 or older, learn if a reverse mortgage could help. Visit ReverseBaltimore.com. An equal housing opportunity lender. This is not a commitment to lend. Stephen J. Sless, NMLS 298581. BRMI, NMLS 3094. Welcome back to the show. My guest uh, today is James Feldman, uh, the analyst and author of the book, uh, Shift Happens. Uh, and some of the things that you talk about, uh, and I want to go to some other subjects, uh, what do you see as the biggest trends in enhancing the customer experience over the I next uh, 12 to 18 months? The customer experience has to be seamless. The customer experience has to be rapid. There's nothing worse than making a phone call to buy something. You go right into the, them to take your order. But when you have a problem with it, you're put on hold. And the longer you wait, the natural tendency is to make the problem bigger and bigger. So you've got to mitigate that situation by immediately coming in and saying, tell me your problem. And as importantly, what is it that you want us to do to fix it? because you don't want to second guess your customer. Often, the customer hasn't even thought about what they want you to do to fix it. They're just assuming that they're going to get into a fight over getting a return or a pair or a replacement or whatever. It's, instead, you say, I understand your frustration. I'm here to help. Let me rephrase the problem. Your computer is not working. Correct. Let me ask you a question. Did you plug it in? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and we talk about uh, creating value, a value proposition for your customers. And well, the value proposition today is time-based. How long is my cell phone going to be down? How long is my computer not going to be working? How long will my vacuum cleaner not suck up the dirt anymore? And the longer you have that problem, the bigger the problem becomes. So you want to do something as quickly as possible. Uh, a good example, I, I ordered something and they said, we're going to deliver it for free. So they send me a note, they say, we've delivered it. So I go downstairs and yeah, they delivered something, but it was to someone else. So I came back upstairs, I called them and I said, hey, you delivered the wrong thing. Yeah, you know, we use Dashlane for delivery and they messed up and we got six or 10 people that got the wrong order. I, I don't care. Just tell me how you're going to fix mine. Guy said, I'm going to send a car to pick it up and deliver it. And I want you to call me the moment you get it. What else could I ask him to do? Right. Nothing. I, I wish the big cable companies would do that. Well, cable is a different question altogether. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, have, uh, I have my cable on speed dial. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, they're always going in and out. And yep. uh, uh, but that's one of the things that we do with our 45 minute breakthrough. We help businesses. Uh, the, the biggest problem is a lot of businesses, they're, fi- they're, as you said, they're fighting their way to the bottom. They're trying to be price competitive. They're discounting. And when you discount, you, you're losing profits and you get yourself in the point of going to the bottom. One of the biggest things is stop discounting. <laughs> you know, you and I are, are in very similar businesses. I, I was talking to a client yesterday and he said, you know, I'm really having trouble paying you. And I said, that's because you're not making any money. And I said, but more importantly, let's focus on what you're spending your money on. We went through the fact that he is spending money on marketing, on promotion, on SEO, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, what has been your ROI on that expenditure? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. So you're throwing this money out every month, but you don't know what's coming back in as a direct result of those efforts. No. Sign me up. Just send me money. I'll be happy to take it from you. He says, well, that's stupid. I said, no, what you're doing is stupid. I just didn't want to call you stupid, but since you've identified it, why are you spending this money and getting nothing back? And when we added it up, Alan, he was spending $900 to $1,200 a month and having no idea whether it was working or not. That's that's absolutely true. I mean, uh, we've, we've done some studies and uh, we, we have a uh, child care uh, uh, that sent out uh, 5,000 mailings to uh, uh, all the homes with young children in, in a five mile radius. Uh, they're spending money and they got no, no return, none whatsoever, <laughs> because they're sending the wrong message. I, I often say, if you're selling dog food, why do you want to talk to cat owners? Right. And uh, uh, we just changed it up, uh, created a compelling argument and sent it out again. They sent it out again and uh, they got 50, 58 responses. 47 uh, applied to the, to the early childhood center and they only had 18 places. They ran it a week. But it's, 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 and they, it's a lot less money, got higher returns and they filled up their, uh, their daycare center in a matter of a, of a week. But it's, it's the messages you've got to get out there. Well, it's not only the message, but it's who's delivering the message. So when I call customer service for anybody, my very first question, are you in the United States? No. Well, let me talk to somebody in the United States. It's like, really? Okay. So last week I had a problem with Amazon. Same story. I said, let me talk to somebody in the United States. The woman's answer was, Amazon has no customer service in the United States. Did that make me feel warm and fuzzy? No. Right. Because she was reading from a script. I couldn't get her to understand what the problem was because it wasn't in her script. Right. So all I did is I went online. I asked to return it. They wrote me back and said, we're crediting your account, throw it away. I went back on and reordered what they should have sent me in the first place. It, uh, those things happen. So when, when do you usually see the light bulb moment and typically, you know, who has it, who needs it? Um, Well, everybody needs it. Everybody needs it all the time. You know, it's one of those aha moments to, to coin a likable phrase. Yes. (laughs) It just raises itself to the top. And everybody has had them. It's the, wow, why didn't I think of that? Wow. Everybody has said I make the best brownies. Maybe I should start seeing if I can monetize the brownies. Maybe I could find somebody to help co-pack it or co-produce it. And you start to walk through those challenges. But everything has to have a positive return on ideas. I call the ROI return on ideas. So your 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 big thing is on ideas, and and uh, so how do you you know how do you 
create some of these ideas and then take them into the marketplace. How do you get that market going? Well, the first thing is to beware of distractions disguised as opportunities. The second one is learn how to say no so that you can say yes. Because people have a tendency to agree to do things they shouldn't agree to do in the first place. The third thing is always figure out how big the market is and will the market pay for it? At what point can you learn from other industries? So as an example, I am a big believer in the fact that an empty hotel room is a lost opportunity. An empty first class seat is a lost opportunity. The difficulty is getting that into practice because if I'm going to a hotel that's let's say 50% occupied, they ought to upgrade me to a suite just as a matter of course. Why? Because they've treated me differently. They have valued me as someone coming to the hotel and they're gonna want my repeat business. I always tell people that my coaching is 45 minutes knowing full well, I'm gonna be on for an hour. But if I tell them my coaching is an hour, I'm gonna be on for 90 minutes. So I have understood what is the reality and what is the promise. So I promise less and always deliver more. And I think that's a lesson for everybody. Well, it, the, the, the key to, is you, uh, uh, you, pro, you, you, know, you under promise and over deliver. Yes. That's one of the keys to operating a business and running a business is, is literally, you know, uh, under promise, over deliver. If you make promises, uh, you need to deliver on them. And you need to make sure that your customer believes you have delivered on them. It doesn't matter what I think. It Correct. matters what, what they think. Mm -hmm. And I will constantly say, I mean, somebody says, would you guarantee your work? And I go, I have what I refer to as a happiness guarantee. It's guaranteed until you're happy. <laughs> now, there may be people that take advantage of that, but at the end of the day, 95% of the people in the world are fair and reasonable. The other 5%, you bite the bullet and then you fire them. You just don't go back and do it again. Right. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, so if there's a single person, a single piece of advice, uh, a golden nugget, nugget if you will, uh, that you'd like to offer to our listeners, what would, what would be that? What would be that piece of advice? And how do you find it in your book? Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, to close out this conversation. I always say to somebody, if you are out there trying to do something, you don't want to be the best at what you do. You want to be the only one that does what you can do. And so you need to ramp up your deliverables. And with that, you start to create an organic audience. You, you start to create evangelists. And so to everybody that's out there, find out what you're passionate about and that you can then deliver that passion to your potential customer. And I have this process. Everyone is a suspect. When a suspect says I'm interested or talk to me or let's set up an appointment, that suspect became a prospect. If the prospect says I'm gonna do business with you one time, that's a customer. But if that customer does repeat business, that's a client. So your ultimate goal is to create clients from your suspects. Right. And if you create the clients, you have an ongoing relationship. I mean, I've had some, some of the same clients for seven years. So pre-pandemic, my average client was in the 20 year plus. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they're all C-suite executives. And almost every one of them has been furloughed, fired, retired, or just gave up. And they're now coming to me with a whole new problem, which is, I don't wanna go back to corporate America, I wanna become an entrepreneur. And then walking them through the process of what it takes to become an entrepreneur and opening up their eyes of what it really involves. Sure, there's great rewards out there, but you've gotta be prepared for the failure. You've gotta be prepared to put in longer hours. I would say that people working from home are working more hours than they worked when they went to the office. But they're also being more productive. You're not traveling. 
you're not chit-chatting, you're not doing socializing at the water cooler. But at the end of the day, you get a fatigue. And so I tell everybody, dress up when you go to the home office, take breaks, just like you normally would, but remember it's the productivity and the deliverables that you've got to focus upon and then get paid. You do not want to be chasing somebody virtually that owes you money. You'll never find them. Right. Uh, I mean, I do, I, I do credit card uh, uh, transactions on everybody. I get, I get a permission slip and, and charge them when I service them. So I've discovered Zelle. And Zelle will transfer the money from their bank account to my bank account with no fees. Right. So if I can save another three or four or five percent on every transaction, pretty soon you're talking about real money. Right. Right. That's an interesting idea. It may be something I should be looking at. Z -E anyway. Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Oh, I, I know Zelle. Oh, okay. I mean, my bank, uh, I can use it. Uh, and I do use it to pay some of my bills. Uh, but I've never thought about using it as a collection source. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but this has been a great pleasure. Uh, James, thank you very much for your cooperation. And remember, he uh, it's uh, the name of the book he's uh, published recently is Shift Happens, uh, uh, How to Reinvent Yourself Using the 3D Thinking. Again, thank you very much for your participation today and good luck in the future. Thank you, and to get the book, it's right above my head. Okay, <laughs> and mine's right behind me, so uh, good luck. Take care. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye.